I can only attribute our current condition as humanity to insanity. We have lost it as a people, as a nation, and as human beings. The capitalist society we have tried to create and be a part of is failing us, and society is crumbling to its knees. Don't know what I'm on about? Check this out. Recent newspaper reports have had me perplexed about the condition of our society. Check out the news from our local dailies. A young man allegedly slaughtered five family members for money after police had been alerted to his volatility and didn't attend to the situation because they had no transport. The crime which was condemned by many on various social media platforms reflects that of a horror movie. Residents of Ndama in Rundu woke up to the shocking news yesterday of a man who killed his grandmother, sister and her three children with what the police believes was a stick. It is alleged that um, the 18 year old boy who is reported to be mentally challenged and also suspected to be a drug um, user, cannabis user, allegedly demanded for money from his uh, mother or from his family but then he was refused money or rather money was not granted to him and that has agitated him so much that then he assaulted his sister. So the sister, because she was assaulted, went to the police to lay charges and she was given the J88 form for medical to be checked by the um, doctors to assess the, the amount of injuries that she has sustained. Now, the suspect Hearing that the sister went to the police, that allegedly agitated him so much that he took a stick and he assaulted the rest of the family that was in the house. That is now the grandmother, the mother, and the three nephews. He allegedly assaulted them with a stick and killing them instantly. The National Law Enforcement Agency, NAMPOL, came under heavy fire after allegations emerged that its officials in Rundu declined to render assistance to the sister who reported the suspect twice. Due to a lack of transport, Shikwambi could however not confirm these allegations. These are allegations and as I have said, we cannot confirm nor deny, but our internal investigation department is, 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 uh, um, is looking into the matter so much that an investigation is launched, indeed, so that they, can, they are able to determine whether there was a negligence from the police. Um, I would like to send out a caution, maybe not really a caution, but rather to discourage the, the, the public from always drawing own conclusions and also circulating unconfirmed information because this causes nothing but tarnishing images, confusion also among society. Uh, the other thing is also that we want to discourage the public from circulating pictures of suspects hmm, who have not yet appeared in the court of law. This is unethical and thus cannot be tolerated. Namibians who have been eagerly anticipating justice in the Cora Awards saga were informed that the High Court has no jurisdiction to try this case. NTB workers held a peaceful demonstration asking for an audit of their management's activities at the Tourism Board. Our health system is in dire straits. Uh, this lineal is for two weeks now without any medication, without any washing powder for two weeks now. I don't know how far the patients they are living in the world. Maybe there is something supposed to be done by the national level. We are sick and tired of this system. We are having the accounting officer, but there is no steps were taken. This is the laundry where they are cleaning the, the material, the linen of the hospital. They are here for two weeks without cleaning them. I think it will be rotten on this bag where they are packed them. I don't know what the problem. Maybe to ask the accounting officer for this issue. It's supposed to be responsible. They are tired, but there is now no response on these issues. Linen are full on these boxes, on these boxes, or the bags where they are put the linen. The staff, they are talking to the high authority in this hospital, but there is no response. 
This linen is supposed to be thrown away because now they are heavy here for two weeks. Our director, he was reported, he knows the situation, but there is nothing done for two weeks. Now they are looking, the staff member of the hospital, they must try to contribute money to go and buy the washing powder for this linen. We are sorry. I don't know what the problem was supposed to be taken into consideration. We are watching our government. I don't know if they are aware or national level, they are aware of this situation. Please, we'll try to send you this video to look into this matter. We are asking the staff of the laundry, they say that for two weeks without any washing powder for this material, the linen will be rotten any time from now. Two weeks, it's a long story. I don't know which way the patient, they are covering themselves, what they are wearing, their uniform, but now they are putting their own uniform without any uniform for the hospital. They are collecting blanket at home. Well, there is a blanket at the hospital. I think you will receive this video as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Hepatitis outbreak in Swakopmund. Four confirmed cases and an increasing number of cases of swine flu. A robber was killed at the roadblock following an alleged robbery at Standard Bank in Kurunkuru. Helicopters and all were called in. Human remains were found at Rossing and kids are growing weed at PK de Villiers Hostel in Kitman's Whip. <laughs> the land issue. Now that scares me. The callousness with which the city of Winterk is evicting people from their homes in this the coldest winter ever. Behind me is Earth 3318 in Dolam Katatura, where Regina Gomachas and her family have been living since the 1960s when her parents were relocated here from the old location. On Thursday last week, today on one was called to witness the eviction of Gomachas and her family from Earth 3318 by the Namibian police. Komachas explained to Today on One that after her parents' death in 2002, she approached the National Housing Enterprise for financial assistance in order to buy the house from the city of Vintuk, but all her attempts were ignored. The Weather Bureau predicts this to be the coldest night of the year and Today on One has returned to the site where Gomachas and her family are camping in the street. We've returned to hear from Vintuk East Councillor Ruben Shihama and community leader Rosa Namises on their opinions of the matter. Vintuk East Constituency Councillor Ruben Shihama said that he was deeply saddened by the eviction, which was definitely not done according to procedure. Regina, Regina visited my office because of this problem. And then I saying, okay, we have to go only to the government lawyers so that we can get assistance from them. And it is it, it's what we done where I found difficult time now. Like these cases, we are standing here because of this case, removal of the people from their properties, houses. Uh, this is not uh, the right process. I'm, I'm not happy to listening to this uh, story. Community activist and Dolam resident Rosa Namises said that those with money are using the poor residents in Dolam as soft targets for economic exploitation. The house um, is bought by those who have the money, but the way how the house is bought or the way how the house is put on auction, I remember very well. I was demonstrating at the Katutura Magistrate Court where clever men and men in this case, because these are women that are suffering, men in this case were organizing themselves, having knowledge within an inner circle in the city of Vandu, and they were selling off the houses amongst each other. Many houses standing here being built beautifully today are the houses that has gone that fate. Two houses down from Earth 3318 are two double-storey houses. According to the community, the previous owners of these houses were also unjustly evicted. The houses are sold not to have residential purposes, but to enrich that buyer. This house is, to be, is rented out already to an individual, to other families. It's a rented house. The house is bought to be rented, and these people are becoming homeless. City of Ventu. NHE, all those people must accept their mistake and with immediate urgency help this family to have a shelter.
The city of Vintok has been unable to enlighten the media on why Regina Gomachas' efforts to settle her father's debt on the house were rejected. Today on One has made numerous attempts to talk to the city of Intuk about the initial sale of the property. Whilst we await a response, this is one of dozens of evictions that have taken place in Vintuk this year. Whilst informal settlements grow and evictions occur almost randomly, the community is losing faith in government's ability to solve the housing crisis. And farm evictions. An angered Willem governor said the family has been living on the farm for the past two years. No government credit om op 4700 in person, but next head me. They man come from Kunene region. Very hard resettle was. Ons hoor net die probleme gehad, die het vier gehad. Is ons die probleme ook nie so groot nie. Hy word gebring die kan doe. En ons wat hy so sê, word uitgevat met so veel vier. Fellow evictee, Renef Hoogasis, stated that this new owner does not even have livestock and is using the farmland for hunting. Eenaar wat daar in Doringbong geresettel is, die man het tot die riese hierdie 2,5 jaar wat het daar wat ons daar gesit het, het nie nie in sy koei of a hond of a hoener nie. Hy bly nie eens op die plas nie. Ons het op die plas geblei, al hierdie jare. Hy kom, ena man kom hy net twee keer. As hy kom, dan kom hy saterdag of vredag aan, dan gaan hy weer die saterdag terug. Die plek staan net soos as ons uitgedrek het daar, so daar is niemand. Governor added that they have approached the Deputy Minister of Land and Resettlement and the Hardab Councillor, but have just been left with empty promises. Laat die president en die sak en moet gaan. Ons weet hoe toe net gesê, hy het die grond vir arme mense nie. Is die die bewese, dat rarag waar arme mense en die Namibia nie grond kan kree nie. Is het omdat die die man gevat het en en a man met geld gevat en in die plaas gegeet, en ons arme mense, en moet so lee. Governor informed today on one that if the owner does not open the gates to allow them to collect water, they will take the farm back by force. Tairi Anghansa. The madness permeating our society fills me with dis-ease and the way the land issue in particular is being handled fills me with angst. The South Africans really aren't playing on this land issue and I've seen some compelling submissions on the topic. Check this out. I don't know a brown man, I don't know a black man, I know an African And this is African. I want to say loudly that we are for Section 25 amendment. The amendment to ensure this continuation of colonial perpetuation of our people. It must be on the basis of today our people are dying because they do not have access to the land. The land today that carries herds that our ancestors used to empower the immune system. Today it is spent, their health is deteriorating and they are dying in numbers. Our land is polluted by organic seed, food that is genetically modified and create business for capitalists who are investing in pharmaceutical companies that want this GMO to, 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 to be planted in our, in, our, in our land. These are the reasons we are mentioning. And I want to also remove the notion that our people can't work the land. You can go now to any farm. Our people are working the land. They are actually the people who work the land. The others are sitting in, in, in air conditioned offices, washing through the wind. Why our people on a very hot sun here in Africa and the outskirts of Africa burn in those farms? Uh, we want this continuation of a minority domination of the land. Why? Because minority seeks to oppress majority through this land application. The land must, the land, section 25 of the land must be amended. 
Uh, and we must never be deceived that uh, uh, colonial education did not indoctrinate our people to believe they are brown people and black people, white people, all in the land of Africa. We are white people. We must never allow colonialism to divide us. Then this was the same. Till today, it's genocide to our people. Activist Joe Bamupanda recently addressed a quorum on the land debate in which the German ambassador Matthias Schlager also participated. After the Second World War, additional 9 million hectares of land was given to the soldiers that participated in that war. They did not know anything to do with farming. Historically and factually, everybody that has and occupies land today is not a person who was from agriculture, who had any sort of uh, that background. Let's, let's be very clear when we speak about that. And I'm from the affirmative preposition movement. I want to assist the discussion going forward. You see, I, I need to make it very clear here. It doesn't assist you to waste your time with the sell-out government. Genkov is going for his next five years. After that, he's going to go. Any deal or any, this conference doesn't succeed. We are going to occupy land. Those farms we are going to take without compensation. I cannot guarantee whether it's going to be with violence or no violence. But what can we do to solve this problem? But there's a lot of things that we can do. Let's be honest and sincere with the discussion, not about whether we think the economy, land conference and all those things. You must understand that we have to make those institutions work. If it, if it works for you now, it does, it does not solve the problem. Let's make it very practical. If we ask the gentleman from Namibia Agricultural Union, if I can organize 20 youth who, with qualification in agriculture for you to give us a portion of your farm, I challenge you, you will not do it. I will organize those youth with agriculture qualification in various backgrounds for you to give us a piece of your farm. You will not do it because that's why it is. But white people could also just say, okay, now for the farm that I have, I'm going to give a certain portion. He posted, we shared this perspective with one white farmer. We challenged him to give a portion of his farm to the youth. The answer was obviously no. We told him that the sellouts protecting them will go and we will get them. Last week, the Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Loire Kasingo, adjourned the House following a disagreement with PDM member Vipwa Muharukwa. I spoke to her this week. You, you are talking in terms of the incident which happens on Thursday, the 21st of June, and whereby I made use of uh, the rules 115 of the Standing Rules and Order to adjourn, because by that particular moment, there was a grievously disorder in Parliament. Uh, the member, the, the, the presiding officer by then, I was a presiding officer as a deputy speaker, uh, uh, representing the, the speaker because by then he had other engagement. I tried to call the particular member to order. You might recall that uh, apart from the constitution, our behavior and the conduct are being guided by the constitution as well as the standing rules and order. To say that, uh, for example, in rule 109, whenever a presiding officer rises, the question arises, it means when he speaks, immediately the member who is standing should sit and wait for the presiding officer to finish. It didn't happen. And that's why you find out I called the particular member to order and the other member stood up. As a result, there was a, a grievous disorder. I have no other option rather than to uh, adjourn the House in terms of um, Rule 115. You cannot tell me to have sympathy. You cannot. I told you that you should not uh, point fingers on the presiding officer. Okay, I won't. We should not point fingers on the presiding officer. Oh, who do you think you are? It's the tone you want. Let's see what's eating illustrator Dudley Viles' grape this week.
I recently came across this post, which apparently shows a Vintuk Schlachterei employee changing the dates on packaged cold meats. Just look at this. Oh, I reached out to Altava and List, and this was their response. The video you're referring to depicts an old and once-off incident, unfortunately staged by a disgruntled ex-employee who decided to use it as a means of seeking retribution from the company. The reality is that following an independent investigation early in the year, which confirmed that nobody was ever in danger, as well as the products in question were consumed before expiry, disciplinary action was implemented against the persons responsible for the unauthorized actions, and corrective measures put in place to ensure an incident of this nature is not repeated. Namibia Dairies regards the health and safety of its consumers of utmost importance. Cecilia says is up next. When I heard about this guy who killed the whole family in the house, I was very shocked. My heart is still beating. I don't know what's going on with the guys in the world killing the whole family at home or killing other people out from the street. We need to pray for these killers because this thing is going on. We need to help each other as one family, as one people in, in, in one country. But what is going on? To me, it's a very short thing. This man needs a lot of prayers. He needs to go to counseling. He needs everything. I don't even think he must go to jail because that person is not normal. This week on Crime Watch. Okay, so today we're going to give some safety tips because we had one or two incidences uh, in this year or basically from December until now where uh, the rocks were thrown at people while they're on the highway. Now you must remember this is Namibia and it's, I have not the statistics to say to you but I know of two cases and that's in a long period of time. So we don't say this is happening all the time and people must be in fear. So I'm speaking to you as a person here that wants to help you out as a citizen driving and using the roads. When you do come to a stop street or something, make sure of your surroundings and make sure that the vehicle behind you has is not too close be observant of your surroundings and then proceed if you can as quick as possible if there is a situation where you feel you're under attack in that there is a law that can protect you where you can get away from the scene which means you might have to go through a stop street or a red robot but when your life is directly as in threat you can possibly do this to save yourself now the other thing is the people have been speaking to me and they'd like to like uh, ask the city of Vintuk would you be able to put up some lights by the bridges deep bush the rivers and debush the grass is long so these things will be asked and addressed to the city of Vintuk and we're hopefully going to get some assistance from them but while you're out there be safe be alert and let somebody know where you are at all times be wise and save lives thank you for watching please follow it's a wrap with Erica Gebhardt on Facebook and Insta and subscribe to the YouTube page to stay woke on the stories that matter to you and me.